Hey, what's up guys? It's Cobra from codingwithcobra.com. And today I'm gonna to be showing you guys basically how we take the data that an API gives us and convert it into Swift. So APIs, most APIs these days, are gonna give you data in a format called JSON. So JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation, I think, and definitely something that you need to know as a developer. So you can just type into Google um, mock uh, JSON to do data and this typey code website, you can come here and then it's kind of big, my bad. You can come down to to do's. You could do this with any of them though. Um, anyways, so if you come into here, you're gonna get something like this. Now I might have a um, extension, but you can type like JSON extension. Chrome or Firefox or whatever you use. So you can use something like this to make it nicer for you. Now, this is what JSON looks like, and it's pretty simple, but it might be weird if the first time you see it. But basically, we have different things. So, first off, here, the square bracket that we've all seen, that means an array. The curly braces mean an object. So as you can see, we basically have an array of objects here. They're each individual to-dos. They have a user ID, uh, which is an int, an ID, which is an int. They have a, a title, which is a string, and they have this completed, which is a Boolean. So our job is we need to get this data into Swift data. So it's pretty easy once you know what you're doing. Um, we can actually just copy this data. We're gonna say struct, struct to do, and this is just a playground I have open. You don't need to do this if you don't want. Um, I'm just gonna show you quickly. So let's paste that in, and if I hold down my option key, I can edit multiple lines at once. So I'm gonna get rid of that quotation. I'm gonna say let. I'm just gonna get rid of all of these brackets as well. Basically, what I need to do is I need to match each uh, JSON variable. I believe this is still called a variable and it's a key value pair. Each key needs to match up with the variable name in Swift. So let's see if I can make this bigger, I can. So basically, since we have user ID, that's an int ID, it's an int. Title is a string, completed is a Boolean. So just make sure that whenever you're using an API, your variable names match up with the JSON variable name. And by the way, this can be sneaky. For example, maybe sometimes you don't have a user ID. So then this, this uh, user ID needs to be optional. Otherwise we'll get a crash. So the last thing that we need to do is we need to conform this object to the codable, either the codable or decodable protocol. The D, if you're not encoding it, so if you're not converting it from Swift back to JSON, then you can just use the decodable. So you have three of them. You have decodable, you have encodable, encodable, and then you have codable. So codable is both decodable and encodable. Um, when we're converting uh, data from JSON to Swift, we need decodable or encodable. Now, this gets a little bit crazier when you have an object inside of an object. Um, there's ways to handle it and we'll be going over that today. So what I'm gonna do is come to the API documentation and go to the endpoint that we're gonna be hitting, which is listings latest. So as you can see, we have this here. I'm just gonna copy one of the objects. It's this big, long thingy. Now the objects, again, it's the curly braces. That's how we know if something is an object. Okay, so I've actually copied the full thing. So let's go to the very top and see what we notice. So first off, this whole thing is an object because it's in curly braces. And in our root level, we have two things. We have status and data. Now the status gives us information about our API requests. So error code and stuff like that. And then data is this, uh, it's an array. So data is a variable, which is an array. 
and it's a, an array of these cryptocurrencies, as you can see. So we have Bitcoin first, then Ethereum, and that's all we have here for the example. So we also have um, the name, uh, the coin market cap rank. We have a bunch of information, but if you come down and actually look at this, um, we have another object inside of our crypto coin object, our Bitcoin one in this case. And um, so that's an object because it has a curly brace. And then inside the Quo object, we have a USD object. Now, I think I'm using Canadian dollars, so mine will be CAD. But yeah, so that's where all the pricing data is. So we have an object in an object in an object, which is in, a, in an array. So we're gonna have to make the Swift structs with that in mind. Now there's one more thing I want you to pay attention to. And in our API documentation, as you can see here, we have other kinds of results that we get back. We have error results. So if we paste this into sublime text, as you can see, we can also get an object back with a status and error code and error message. So we're gonna be making structs for that as well. So let's open up Xcode and go to our models. So we can go into models and coin. So the first thing I wanna do, let's just grab this mock array, uh, get mock array, and let's just delete that function. Now let's go into our home controller and we're just gonna paste that array here instead for now. And we do have some errors. We can just say coin dot quote on all of these, I think. Okay, so we, we still have some errors. It looks like same thing. Can do that quickly. So let's go back into coin and let's work on this. Now, if we actually look at our struct, um, we can see that it's already kind of matching up. We have ID and ID, we have CMC underscore rank, and we have CMC underscore rank. You, sh you should notice that we can skip, like if we don't want circulating supply, we don't have to make a variable for that. We can make computed properties that aren't actually in here. And I think we can make, yeah, we can definitely make optional values that aren't actually in here. Now, I don't really like having structs inside of structs. So we're just gonna pull these structs out of here and make them on their own. First off, now generally what we would do is we would have like max supply here. We would have this camel case like this, let max supply. But in our API, it's max underscore supply or CFC underscore rank. So how would we change the variable names if we wanted to? The way that we would do that is with something called coding keys. I'm gonna show you how this works. Basically, if you want a variable name to be different in Swift from your API, we can say inside of our coin struct, we can say enum coding key, su with an S, uh, colon, string, comma, coding key without an S. Okay, and we can build that. Now make sure you get this one with an S and this one without an S. I, I think this might matter, might not, this S on this one, I'm not sure, to be honest. Now we need to match up all the variables. I'll just show you. So we're gonna say case ID equals ID. Okay, because we want a ID to be the same, that's fine. We're gonna say case name equals name equals string name. We're gonna say case max supply. So this is what we want to call our variable equals the name that we don't want. So the undesired name. So it's gonna be max underscore supply. Let's continue. We're gonna say rank, case rank. So this is our desired name equals undesired name, so CMC underscore rank, or JSON name, the name they have in JSON. We're gonna say case pricing data equals uh, string of quote, string quote, because quote is kind of weird. I want it to be called pricing data. 
So all of so now we can come back up to our objects and we can change them all to be the cases in our enum. So see that? That should be working now. So take a look once more. This case wants to be the, the desired name that we want in our Swift. And this string wants to be the uh, needs to be the undesired name that we have in our JSON data. So this doesn't matter as much what this uh, quote, this object, notice we still have a quote. That doesn't matter that much. It's more of the variable names, but we're still gonna change it. So we're gonna call this pricing data. You can build that. And we do have some errors. So you could keep the names that it was. It's completely up to you. So there's still an issue with this code. See if you can figure it out. Take a look at our JSON struct and then, uh, or data, and then look at, a, at our Swift structs. What's wrong with it? Well, what's wrong with it is that this JSON data comes in an array. So notice we have this variable called data, and then that's where we get our cryptocurrency array. So we need a top level object still. So we're gonna say struct, um, we can just say coin array, and then we need our variable name to be the same as our variable name here. So we're gonna say let data colon, and this is an array of coins. So that's what we need, array of coin. Now there may be a case, um, like maybe you find this ugly, how we have this pricing data here, and we have this CAD, and it's all like an object inside of an object. So I'm not gonna complete, I'm not gonna go over this, but I'm gonna show you how you could flatten this. I'll just show you the code, you can type it in and observe it. So this is the code that you would make if you wanted to flatten this. Uh, so this would be the pricing data inside pricing data. And we just completely get rid of the CAD struct. So as you can see here, we have that CAD uh, variable that you would have here in the coding keys. And then we make this container. Um, we get this nested container for CAD. And then we get the price uh, out of that container. And we, also, we set it in this. So you could do that. You could even get rid of the, um, the pricing data altogether and just put it in the coin. But we're not gonna go over that because that gets a little bit wonky. So build that. Now, as you might remember, we have this um, error scenario. So we're going to go back into our models and we're gonna make a new uh, file called coin error. And in here, we're gonna say struct coin error of type decodable. Oh, and shoot, I need to do something, I think. These all need to be uh, conforming to decodable. So every single, like if we uh, build it, this will say it does not conform to decodable because all of its child structs need to conform as well. So make sure you put decodable on the end of those. So for the coin error, as you can see, this is an object inside of an object. So we're going to flatten this actually. So we're gonna say let error code uh, colon int. So as you can see, our error code is error underscore code. So we're gonna fix that. We're gonna say let error uh, message colon string. We're gonna make a coding keys. We're gonna say enum coding keys with an S uh, conforms to string and coding key without an S. We're gonna say, we're gonna have a few cases. The first case is gonna be status. As you can see, this um, variable's name is status and we're gonna flatten it. So we need to see, say case status. We're gonna say case error. I'm just gonna copy and paste this in so this doesn't take too long. So we're gonna say uh, case error code, camel case equals error underscore code. Case error message equals error underscore message. So what we need to do now uh, to flatten this, we need to do, we need to make an initializer that conforms um, this from decoder thingy. 
I'm going to copy and paste this in because it's going to take too long. So first we get the container decoder dot container keyed by coding keys dot self. From there, we're going to get the status container. So we say let status equals try container dot nested container uh, keyed by coding keys dot self for key dot status. And then we're going to get each of the variables out of there. So we're going to set error code this variable. We're going to set it equal to try status dot decode um, of type int dot self for key dot error code. Then for error message, we're going to do the same thing. So hopefully you understand that here, what we're doing is we're flattening this object because we have an object inside of an object. And we know that because of the curly braces. Okay, so we have quite a few errors to take care of. So let's go into our, let's find the error thing. And let's come in here and let's see if we can just fix this and see if that works. Let's try it. Let's build that. So that fixed the variable names, but we still don't have something called quote. So we need to change this to pricing data. Let's copy and paste that. And everywhere you see coin.quote, change it to coin. or just pricing data. And you know what? We no longer have uh, CA, we never have the, we no longer have this nested inside of pricing data or formularly quote. So we can just get rid of that. So hopefully that makes sense. So you can just copy this here or remake them. Okay, so let's move on to our next error. So we're having this problem where these computed properties, um, it's no longer CMC rank, it's just rank. So this one's self.quote, we want the, so this is gonna be dot pricing data and then that should work. So dot pricing data for the market cap and then change market cap to camel case. Oh, what's going on here? Hmm. So you could use coding keys to fix this, but I think we're just gonna move on. Um, yeah, let's just move on so we don't cause any errors. But you can try changing that to market cap with code and keys and see if it works. Should work. So max supply. And we should be good. So let's try running this. Okay. And it seems to be working. So I think we're done here. Oh. A little bit of lag there. But yeah, it looks like it's working. Just fine. So. Now there is one more thing we're going to do. We're going to go into coin. And now that we have the ID, we'll be fetching it from the JSON. We're actually going to change this to ID. Now this should work. I mean, actually, um, we might get some weird logos. We'll see. Yeah, so we don't get the correct logos right now, but that's fine. Now there is one more thing that I will say. I'm re-recording this video because it's kind of long. It's getting long again. But I made an error in the following episodes. I wrote the code like this. Now this will work. Look at look at both of them. Um, because we have this status thing, both of these will work. But er, but in the later videos, I decode this coin error instead of coin status. Now, if you use this code, this more complicated code that I showed you. Everything will work and you can just proceed on normally. But if you prefer to use this, then you're gonna have to decode coin status and it's wrong in the future episodes. But if you just use this code, everything will work fine. Anyways, guys, I really appreciate you guys watching. Um, if you like the video, like the series, please click like. If you have anything to say, then you can leave a comment, any questions or anything. And if you want more Swift videos, then click the subscribe button. Besides that, you can check out the links in the description. You can get the link to the code and whatever else I have going on. But anyways, thanks again. Peace.